Well, I've never done a uh, build video before. Uh, I don't make too many videos, period. But this is the new Taro 250 Mini Quad Kit. And this is everything you get in the package, of course, instructions. Um, the front and rear arms, which are thin, I think it's 2.1 millimeters. But it's nice, as you can see, it's quality carbon fiber, it's matte finish. All the edges are nice and smooth, they're not sharp. Kind of like a, you know, like the ZMRs, There's, as you can see, they're big, big difference between the carbon fiber and these two. Um, and what I do like about this one, the reason I got it, is the main chassis has an integrated power board and signal board. I mean, it's it covers everything. I mean, GPS, FPV, everything. So, and, it, and it's meant for one of these open pilot CC 3D boards. And, you know, the, the uh, instructions here, you know, they're in English and in Chinese. They give you some wiring diagrams, which are easy enough. But then you look at the layout here, and they show the flight controller in the front, right by the uh, FPV camera. You know, basically sitting right here, you know, up above everything. And uh, I've never flown a quad that had the control board in the front or versus in the middle. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work out. But, uh, you know, so I've, I've looked at this for a couple hours now trying to get everything figured out and uh, um, this is my 200 milliwatt FPV transmitter with a uh, clover leaf antenna and this is a 700 TV line um, camera and as you can see this this is everything that comes with the kit um, it's got the FPV camera mount right here and this is, I believe, the top plate that'll hold the battery. I think the battery will be somewhere around here. I'm using a 1500 nanotech. Uh, and I'm going to try to squeeze this bad boy in there too. This is pretty huge, but uh, they're super loud. And, and with these little quads, and it's good to have a uh, voltage meter. So, And one thing I really like is the, uh, the skids, the landing gear. It comes with these plastic, super really strong plastic skids and they're super super lightweight um, I don't know what kind of plastic is probably a thermal set plastic because I don't think it melts I accidentally hit it somewhere with my soldering iron earlier and it didn't melt anything so that's what I'm thinking it is how you get those super hard plastics um, it comes with these nice machine and aluminum you know they're even screen printed with the tarot logo um, like braces or chassis braces and it comes with these two uh, servo leads and they're both male well they're supposed to go it also comes with these two uh, male servo leads and uh, those I believe are to go from the output here to the inputs here on the chassis um, you know one of course will go across like normal uh, to power everything and the other one should go this way so and that's what powers everything and then these get soldered on and I wondered when I first got it why they're so short but it's because they you're supposed to have the board right here in the front so I'd be curious to see how that's gonna work out so we'll just leave those on there and uh, this here is meant for GPS or FPV but my FPV only needs a uh, you know, positive and negative, so what we're going to do is take the uh, white wire out of this and then just solder these wires to these two leads here. So It also comes with this uh, Velcro kind of, which is really, really strong. Um, it's a really almost smooth Velcro. I've never seen Velcro like this before and it, it really, really works well. I believe this is to hold the battery on, but uh, and of course it comes with another piece of Velcro here, sticky. Not sure what you want to do with that. And this comes with this, which uh, which is two-sided tape, which is the right size for that, of course. So, um, okay, let's get started. 
All right, we got the soldering iron plugged in, getting ready to go here. Um, this is what I'm using, are these uh, DYS BE1806 motors, they're 2300 kV. And that means that for every volt that goes to the motor, they're going to spin 2300 times. Um, so that's what kV means. <laughs> uh, I use the Turnkey 9 gram 10 amp plush ESCs. Um, they come with the most pimpinest card <laughs> there ever was. It's all nice, lights up and everything, and it's super easy to program your ESCs instead of waiting for those dumb beeps. And for some reason, I could just never seem to get them all right. <laughs> so this is definitely easier than trying to wait for the beeps. So I highly recommend getting one of these. So first thing we're going to do is, I guess, is get these ESCs all set up. And uh, hopefully I can fast forward through this when I edit or whatever and then stop it so it's not so daggum long. Uh, another thing is, is, is on these arms here in the front, your speed controls are going to mount underneath here, okay, like this. That's why that thing is here, so that you can wrap it. So, you know, I like to put the flattest side in because I use a two-sided tape, which is just great stuff. I mean, you don't have to worry about zips or anything like that or, you know, they're just, they're on there and it's super lightweight, so... And with these little bitty wires, you don't need to tin both sides. I mean, you just stick the wire on there, hit it with the heat. Yeah, they say is, you know, the wire as you fly, or they used to say in the army was uh, train as you fight and this is basically the same thing you want to make sure kind of like we did in that last one where we angled it like this you always want to make sure that everything's going to flow nicely because this thing is pretty intermediate level build here and uh, you really need good solder like some Kester uh, I think the number is 44 but it's like a 60-40 split uh, Rosin core solder is really good stuff. So. fold over something like this we'll get that figured out when we assemble it um, you know I like to be safe and keep the wires that I can so you know, it'll be something like that so all right now that we beat up the motors pretty good here and the camera so now fun part. Okay, we're going to try to wire the board in. <clears throat> it has uh, black, red, and white. Then you hook these into there, and then these ones into the other ones like it shows here. Okay, now we're going to attempt to build this thing. Um, okay, so there's a shot of the instructions that come with it. And 
it's going to be a good time. <laughs> so they give you all these things have you know captured screws. It looks like um, super super small Allen wrench, which is not supplied in the kit. So I hope this is the right size. It seems to be. This is basically the same size as it would come with the motor mount screws, so it should be all right. And my kids out there uh, <laughs> having a good time. Um, anyways, deal it. So let's try to put it together. And as you can see, we got the uh, the wires all soldered up here. Pretty messy, but uh, it's working. So I've never wired anything like this before, so let's see if this works. I don't even know if it's going to have enough room to mount on top of there. And I might want to re-solder them facing the other way so it's cleaner. Because this looks like AS. So anyways. <clears throat> so this is supposed to go underneath it here. It shows these in the front. So in order to get this in here, I found out earlier, you kind of got to pinch these because it's a really tight fit. Line up the holes and then let it go, basically, because it's a really, really tight fit. Which is really good. I mean, I had to give them respect for that because the milling is real tight on these. to go <coughs> like this. Hmm. It's kind of a pain in the ass, I'm telling you. There's a deal, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to put those wires through there. Solder or anything, it's really gonna suck. So, you can see the, uh, <coughs> the antenna for this needs the FPV needs to go through this hole here and then back onto the transmitter. See, and then it offers kind of like a protection for it. So, it has to go somewhere where it's going to fit. And I don't know. So, okay, so it's got to go right there. Okay, we had to do, uh, come to find out, was this, you can't use the USB port if you mount it on the top where they want you to, okay, because uh, that metal brace right here, so it screws you. So what we're going to do is I cut these spines off, and we're going to mount it on the underneath upside down, okay, and I'm going to put it more towards the middle, since I trust that more, <laughs> so, and uh, we'll mount it with a bunch of double-sided tape, and we're going to hardwire it to here. So <laughs> that's why I'm making this video because this is a new frame and uh, nobody's made a video so nobody's made all the mistakes or anything yet so <laughs> here's all the mistakes and, and what I did to fix it. So Okay basically what we did was we put the, uh, let me see if you can see it here, we, we hardwired to the board all these and then wired to the uh, frame. I um, also had to replace this to be a female end here. Um, it came with this male end right here, but all my batteries have male ends, so I had to switch it with this one. Um, as you can see what I did with the speed controls and everything, I just kind of stuffed them in there and put a couple of you know uh, zip ties on there to hold it. But, you know, as it sits, it looks looks really clean, you know. Everything's tucked away really nice, kind of hidden. So, 
that's good. So hopefully this little wiring thing works. And because you have to have access to this uh, USB in order to you know to program anything. So um, I just use two-sided tape, mount it right there, and there it is. So we'll try that. Okay, so in order to get this to fit, I had to dremel out a little bit of this to allow for the plug of the camera. So these are all different. I mean, you know, when it comes to mounting the camera, they're, you always got to change something. Well, here it is. This is the Taro 250 Mini Quad. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, wasn't the easiest build in the world. You know, you got to have some ingenuity. And uh, you know, I mounted the control board underneath, along with the uh, receiver and the FPV transmitter, like it says in the uh, in the manual. Well, the manual says to put this on top here, but I don't see where to or where you put it. But um. I kind of wanted to get it more towards the middle anyways, because I just, uh, I mean, understand in theory that that would work, but uh, I'm not going to try it with all the money that's wrapped up in this thing, so. But, I mean, it's nice and robust and pretty friggin' lightweight. Let me get my scale, and we will find out. I don't know if you can see it or not. But 448 grams with the battery. That's not bad at all. So, I mean, <clears throat> would I recommend it to somebody? Yes, yes, I would. It's a really nice quad. The uh, carbon fiber is just high quality matte finish. It's just a, a good design, but you've got to know how to solder. You've got to have some, you know, really good solder, like some Kester. Definitely need that, because uh, soldering to that little board and then soldering like this, like I did, that's rough. So, let's see, let's do our first test. See if everything works. See, he's a Turnigy, 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 whatever, 9X with the DSM-2 uh, module. So, let's see if this works. It's going to kick the motors over. Should be good to go. And there you have it. It's pretty nice. I like it. And uh, I have my super custom FPV <laughs> goggle system. It works really well, actually. Uh, the hat takes the weight, so I mean, you know, I can't afford that Fat Shark stuff, so they won't sell just the goggles. You gotta buy the whole friggin' system. And spending two, three hundred bucks on that stuff when I've got like fifty and <laughs> all wrapped up into this, and it does the same thing. So, there you have it. I think I paid forty dollars for this and the transmitter, so. Anyways, in closing, I think it's a great, great quad. I uh, can't wait to fly it, but right now it is raining outside, and uh, I don't want to do it. <laughs>